Hello, everybody. And welcome to Theology 101. Today, we are going to look at the book of Philemon. The book of Philemon is the 18th book of the New Testament. The New Testament has five sections. The Gospels, the Acts of the Apostles, the Pauline Epistles, the General Epistles, and the book of Revelation. The Gospel contained the life ministry, teachings, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The Acts of the Apostles give a historical account of the Gospel and the growth and spread of the Christian church. The Pauline epistles are a collection of letters written by Paul to different churches during his time, while the general epistles are letters written by other leaders, such as Peter, John, and Jude, to different churches. Finally, the book of Revelation gives a picture of how the story of the world will end with Jesus returning to earth to restore and reign on it. The book of Philemon is a part of the Pauline epistles section of the New Testament. Paul is the author of the letter to Philemon. Philemon is one of the four letters called the prison letters of the Apostle Paul. The other three are Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. Of the four prison letters, Philemon is the shortest one, and Paul writes to an individual rather than an entire church. The letter is written to Philemon, who was a prominent member of the church at Colossae. He was wealthy with a large home and slaves. We see evidence in this letter of a close bond between Paul and Philemon. Paul calls Philemon his beloved fellow worker. Paul commends Philemon for his involvement in God's kingdom work, and he appeals to him based on love. Paul also mentions that they have a common partnership and reminds Philemon that he led him to faith. Finally, Paul says that he trusts Philemon to do what he requested and even more. Although the letter is written to Philemon, Paul includes other names such as Aphia, who may have been Philemon's wife, and Acrippus, which suggests that this letter was probably read to a larger group of people who met in Philemon's home as a church. Paul's purpose in mentioning them is to make Philemon realize that his response to Paul's request will not be a private decision but one for which he will be accountable to the community of believers of which he is a part of. So what was the Apostle Paul's request? Although Paul begins his appeal in Philemon verse 8, he does not say exactly what he is requesting until Philemon verse 17. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. So Paul is writing on behalf of Onesimus, the runaway slave of Philemon. Onesimus ran away from Philemon, which would have been a crime punishable by death, and ended up in a large city. Through God's providence, Onesimus met the Apostle Paul who led him to faith, and eventually Onesimus helped Paul in his ministry work, which is why Paul calls him a faithful and dear brother. Paul could have kept Onesimus by his side as a co-worker, but he decided to use this situation to reconcile Philemon and Onesimus. Paul wanted Philemon to think through the implications of his faith and slavery, and to influence him to free Onesimus and view him no longer as a slave, but a fellow brother both spiritually and socially. The way the Apostle Paul speaks to Philemon shows great rhetorical skill. Paul used the psychology of commendation and emphasized his own self-sacrificial suffering for the sake of the gospel, implying that Philemon should do the same. Paul also played on Philemon's goodwill and appealed to personal bonds of friendship. He offered to assume responsibility for any losses Philemon experienced because of Onesimus' crime, but he balanced that by reminding Philemon how much he owed him, namely his salvation. Paul also reminds Philemon of the embarrassment he may feel if he does not do what he requests the next time he sees him. So we see how Paul's approach is both personal and pastoral. He knows how to apply pressure without being rude. We see how Paul did not convince Philemon by utilizing his apostolic authority, but the art of persuasion. And Paul's overall message in the letter is that because of Onesimus' conversion, Philemon and Onesimus are brothers in Christ. This new reality should change the way Onesimus is viewed in Philemon's household. And Paul urges Philemon to receive Onesimus no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother. So did Philemon do what Paul asked? We know that Philemon did do what Paul requested as discovery of early documents show repeated references to an elderly bishop named Onesimus who led the church at Ephesus in the early part of the second century, according to Ignatius. It seems that Onesimus was not only freed as a slave, but he became a leader in the church 
that Philemon himself submitted to. And so one of the effects of this letter is that this letter was used to challenge the institution of slavery historically. The gospel, according to Paul, challenges and redefines the social structure of the common practice of slavery. So this letter was rightly used to condemn this practice. Within the Christian community, slaves and masters were to express their relationship as mutual servants rather than hierarchically along lines of authority. As a result, class differences have become irrelevant among Christians. In Christ, there was neither slave nor free, but all were one in him. We also see how Paul encouraged Christian slaves to take the opportunity to free themselves if it was presented to them, and those who were free were to avoid becoming slaves again. Conversely, Christian slave owners were to act as servants to their slaves, and all Christians were to be servants of one another. Although it is one of the shortest letters in the New Testament, Philemon is an important letter that shows the equality that every believer has in Christ and how all humans, regardless of race, gender, class, status, or rank, are one in Christ. Thank you to today's sponsor, On Reverence. They offer a free digital worship music app called Maskill. If you want to find out more, I'll leave some links below in the description box. If you missed the last video about the pastoral epistles, I'll leave a link here for you to watch. And until next time, see you.